Huge news as Six Flags and Cedar Fair announced that they're merging together into one company? What? What does that mean? So huge news came out. I'm doing a live stream episode and somebody throws this quote at me that Six Flags and Cedar Fair are joining together, merging together into one company. And I'm like, it's not April Fool's. What are you talking about? That's not even funny. And then I found out it's not a joke. They really have agreed on a merger. This is after Six Flags tried to purchase Cedar Fair last year. And, uh, but they have agreed to merge together uh, into a huge company now. Um, and it it's a big deal. Combining together, it amounts to an $8 billion deal. Uh, expected to close at the first half of 2024 with the headquarters of the whole company in Charlotte, North Carolina, which happens to be where Paramount, Paramount Parks had their headquarters when they uh, were bought out by Cedar Fair. So that means that Six Flags headquarters, which is currently in Texas, is going to move. Um, and they will still leave some offices in Sandusky. Yes, my dog is excited as well. Total combined, it means 27 amusement parks, 15 water parks between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. So just based on number of parks, it makes them the largest amusement park chain in the country. But there's more to it than that. Surprisingly enough, there really isn't much competitive overlap. There's basically two places where they have parks that compete with each other, at least within a two to three hour drive. You've got Northern California where you've got Discovery Kingdom in Vallejo and uh, Cedar Fair's Great America, which they've already announced is closing here in a couple years. So really no competition issues. The only other place they're in relatively close competition is in Southern California where you have Knott's Berry Farm and Six Flags Magic Mountain and a very excited dog. <laughs> The only other place they really overlap is Southern California, where you have Knott's Berry Farm and Six Flags Magic Mountain, which are flagship parks for both of them. They're relatively close there. That's really the only place that they will be in almost semi-direct competition with themselves. The only other place relatively close I can think of is Kansas City and St. Louis, and they're still over three hours apart, so not a big deal. So there really isn't any competitive issues and I don't see them closing Magic Mountain or Knott's Berry Farm because both do huge attendance numbers. So that's probably not going to make a big deal. Southern California, there's also plenty of other competition between uh, Disneyland and Legoland and Universal. And you could even throw in San Diego with SeaWorld. And there's all sorts of other attractions and stuff there. So they've already got plenty of competition. They're not closing out anything that way. So the way the deal's working, Cedar Fair shareholders holders are getting one share of stock in the new company. Six Flags shareholders are getting just over a half stock. Value overall is $2 billion in stock. Cedar Fair's CEO, Richard Zimmerman, is taking over as the chief executive officer, the guy who's making all the decisions. Six Flags CEO, Salim Basul, I hope I said that right, is going to be chairman of the board. Basically, it means he oversees the board. They kind of make the big corporate decisions. But when it comes to actually running the chain, uh, he's out, which honestly is probably a good thing. That means the company that runs the better parks right now, the one that's seen their parks keep up, that guy is still the one in charge. The board itself is split six people from Six Flags, six people from Cedar Fair. But um, like I said, the ones that are running the better parks are basically the ones still going to be running the show. So a couple things that I have seen out on the Internet. I've seen fears of uh, antitrust competition. The FTC is going to step in and shut this down. Um, I've seen fears of the condition of the park. So here's my thoughts of, of what it actually means. Uh, the two companies combined in the last 12 months had an estimated 48 million guests between them um, and about 3.4 billion in revenues. So it sounds like a huge company um, and they will have the most amusement parks in the U.S. However, to put it in perspective, $48 million for a combined company, Disney had 72 million people attend their parks. Cedar Fair, $3.4 in revenues. Disney, $24 billion. 
Disney's far outclassed them. Uh, Universal still has about the same attendance and still has about $4 billion more in revenue. So they would step up to number three from being four and five, but SeaWorld's still not that far behind at 22 million people in attendance and uh, close to $2 billion in revenue. They're not that far behind them. You still also have Hershend Parks. You've got Merlin Entertainment. You have Palace, which runs Kennywood and Idlewild and a couple others. Not to mention all sorts of independent parks and stuff throughout the country. So when it comes to actually competition, they're not coming anywhere close to creating a monopoly. That's where the Federal Trade Commission and the government's concerned is, does it become a monopoly? Does it eliminate competition? Nope, doesn't do either of those. Um, it makes them bigger. It makes them stronger financially. But no, they're not going to put Disney out of business. They're not going to put SeaWorld out. They're not going to put Hershey. They're not even in competition really with these companies. Uh, in fact, there isn't any place that you can find where them combining is putting another competitor at risk of being shut out. That's what they're concerned with as far as government regulation goes. Is this going to affect all the other companies and shut them out and eliminate them? Nope. So therefore, there is no worries at all about the FTC saying, no, this isn't a good deal. Sorry, those of you that are all on the bandwagon and there's people all over Reddit and some of the other forums going, oh no, why not, boy? Uh, no, not even close. This is not anything that's going to get regulated or shut down. So what it does mean is that they're going to save about $200 million a year in overhead and administration and stuff like that. They're actually expecting over the next few years, if this goes through, once it goes through, because it will, they're expecting to generate uh, over 10 years, I think, an extra $3.4 billion in revenue. It's expected that they're going to work on bringing Six Flags parks up in quality. They certainly can't go down too much more. And work together on getting things together. They believe that they're going to be able to invest more and do more for the parks as a whole. Uh, one of the things I was seeing was that they were planning on using the Six Flags moniker uh, and keeping that. The chain itself is going to be called Six Flags, but they're going to use the Cedar Fair name on the stock market. They've got a multitude of different properties. You can now take uh, DC and Looney Tunes and Snoopy and bring them all together in the parks. Uh, I do think the Cedar Fair does a better cohesive job with theming. There was one post I was reading that, oh no, here goes Knott's Berry Farm. Cedar Fair has made it clear that Knott's Berry Farm is a treasure. And honestly, the last few visits I've had, I was very impressed with how they were running it. Uh, is it the same as when Walter Knott was running it? No. But it's not that far off and compared to what Six Flags has done with the theming in their parks. It's much better. In fact, even Worlds of Fun, I have noticed... Uh, at least a subtle emphasis on bringing back some of the theming and try to make it a little more cohesive than it had been in the past. Cedar Fairs parks are in better shape. They're better operations. They're cleaner. Uh, I think you're going to see the overall quality of Six Flags improve. Uh, and that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, some of the other fears I saw was, well, prices will go up. Uh, I honestly, I don't think they're going to go up that much. Maybe for your tickets at Six Flags, once they bring the quality of the park up a little bit. But food prices are already high. They can't go too much higher or you're pricing out people. And besides, they're amusement parks. Yeah, it's captive audience. It's going to be high. But there isn't that much more room to raise it up. Uh, now, quality can definitely come up. But the prices are already come pretty close to saturated. So I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, if it is, it's going to be minimal. You will see uh, between the chain, you'll probably see the prices evened out. What I am curious about is because I have annual passes for both. They have said that, hey, this is going to give better value for annual passes because there's more locations. So those of us who have old Six Flags passes that are grandfathered in, are they going to work on the new chain? Or are they going to just eliminate all of them? That I don't know. But overall... I don't think this is going to hurt the Cedar Fair Points parks. I don't think it's going to really affect Knott's Berry Farm. I don't think it's going to affect Cedar Point. I don't think it's going to change anything really there. 
where it will change is in their overhead, the upper, upper management that's not even in the parks. You'll see that get thinned down some. Uh, the other thing I think you're going to see is I think you will see the overall quality of the Six Flags parks improve. Um, probably by a, a lot. Uh, that's going to be, I think, the biggest thing we're going to see is improvements to Six Flags. You're going to see the brands get unified. Uh, so you might, I know this is a scary thought, but you might see Six Flags Cedar Point. Because they have said that they're going to use the Six Flags name. Um, who? That would be something. Um, <laughs> I think you're going to see bigger improvements. It gives them bigger buying power for rides uh, to be able to buy more and pay less. So I think you're liable to see uh, a little bit more that way with all the parks. Um, it would be nice to see some of the parks that have been badly neglected get some attention. Um, I don't know how much that will happen. But it will make the car, the, the company, able to do more for less. Um, I, I honestly, I think, I honestly think, end result, this could be a good thing. Is it possible the quality of Cedar Fair slips some? Possibly, but... Again, you've got Cedar Fair CEO in charge. They're not changing the management at the parks, um, except if anything, it'd be to raise up the standards, I think. I think you're going to see this actually be a, a good thing in general. Uh, what negatives there are? Maybe prices. Maybe some cost cutting in Cedar Fair parks, although Cedar Fair parks have been making profit. Six Flags parks have been taking a loss. I think you're going to see the Cedar Fair company change the management emphasis, change the maintenance emphasis, spend a little more money on it and get them back up and you'll see the profits come up too. Cedar Fair does understand that you have to spend money sometimes to make money. Whereas the guy running Six Flags, thank goodness he's getting put on the board because he's like, cut money because then you make money. Um, it doesn't work that way. Ask Paul Pressler what he did to Disneyland. That's kind of my thoughts. It's going to be interesting to see. It was shocking. I'm still kind of shocked. Uh, but no, it's not antitrust. No, it's not a monopoly. No, it's not anti-competition. Um, and no, I don't think it's going to change anything at the better parks. So uh, if anything, it may may make some big differences in the what, others. I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. Do you think I'm just off my rocker? Or do you agree? I'd love to hear. Share it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I know this is a last second video, so there's a little bit less editing, a lot less editing than usual, uh, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you so much to my patrons, my supporters. Uh, if you want early previews and stuff and other perks, hey, be sure to check out information in the link. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts, your comments, your suggestions, your ideas. Be sure to share them in the comments below, or you can contact me. There's information in the description that has my email address, fan pages, information about merchandise, and so much more. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to hit that like button, share the video, and if you haven't already, hit the button right up there to subscribe. And in fact, if you did enjoy this, I've even got another video for you right here. And also about these wonderful people here, those are my YouTube members and my patrons, the ones whose financial support makes this possible. I couldn't do it without them. If you want to know more about that and the perks that come with it, well, be sure to check the description. There's a link right down there. Thank you so incredibly much. God bless.